Senate in Washington. Even as the Senate investigation goes on, these acts defiantly continue. America must stand guard and relentlessly ferret out this hidden enemy. Naturally, I'm well aware of the charges made yesterday in the Senate that the German government is somehow responsible for these disasters. I can assure you, gentlemen, those charges are entirely unfounded. You might add that if uh, these uh, accidents are proved to be sabotage, we will be especially happy when the culprits are caught. Then perhaps no further reflections will be cast upon us. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Baron. Thank you, Baron. Thanks a lot, Richten, it would seem that the late Consul Lahmann was a trifle careless. I know matters will be better managed now that you have taken over Baron von Detner. However, what you told them is quite true. The Senate Committee has no definite evidence whatever. Nothing but speculation. Even so, we must take better precautions. Bring me the file on Otto Becker. I think the time has come when Mr. Becker will be useful to us. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Dennis. Good night. Good night, Mr. Becker. Good night, Mrs. Dennis. Good night. Time to close up, Miss Hopper. Yes, sir. Thank you, Miss Hopper. Jim. Otto, it's yours. You got it. I did. <laughs> For fifty dollars. For fifty dollars. Sit down. I can't believe it. Let there me see. It is. Oh, Jim, I'm <laughs> I'm so excited. Let me see. Good night, Mr. Becker. Good night, Professor Sterling. Good night for both of us, Miss Harper. This is wonderful. Oh, oh, oh good night, Miss Harper. But how did you get it so cheaply? Wasn't there any bidding? Oh, a little, but nothing serious. There were not many at the auction. You are a very poor liar. Why should I lie? You shouldn't. How much did you have to add to my 50? I got it for 60. How much? Well, 65. But forget about that, Otto. I want you to have it. You know I wouldn't let you do that for me. I'll give you those overprinted Guatemalas you've always wanted. Oh, nonsense. No nonsense. Come on upstairs for a glass of beer and I'll get them. No, 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 not tonight. You can drink your milk alone. <laughs> I have to tussle with some examination papers. All right, Jim. I'm as happy as though I had really accomplished something important. <laughs> but I suppose all collectors are lunatics. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Jim. <laughs> Thank you. I got it, Hansi. Always happy when it's time to lock up, aren't you? I don't blame you. If I could sing, this is the time of day I would choose for it, too. Oh, just a second, Hansi. Excuse me, just a second. Do I still be here? All right, all right. I would rather listen to you anyhow. And now what about going upstairs and having our supper, huh? Come on, Hansi, dinner served. Do you know why we get along so well, huh? 
because we like each other. That's how simple it is. Hmm. Why the sudden stop of the orchestra, Hansi? Huh? What's the trouble, Hansi? What is it? Hmm? Hansi, what is it? Good evening, Otto. Hugo. Hugo. That's better. The way you first looked at me, I thought you were going to call the police. I'm sorry, but you realize that I was hardly expecting you. I thought I would arrange a little surprise for you. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Why are you here, Hugo? Is there anything strange in a man's wanting to see his twin brother? Especially when they haven't met in eight years and the brother won't come to him? You must have known I was here. Yes. I saw the announcement of your arrival last month. But you didn't even telephone me. You know why. Oh, let's forget politics on our first evening together. It's good to see you. Aside from politics, it's good to see you. You've changed, Otto. You've changed. Remember when we were boys? The only way people could tell us apart was by what we carried. You usually had some book in your hand. And you had a wooden sword. <laughs> yes. Let me get you something, Hugo. A glass of brandy, perhaps. You do remember, don't you? Yes, brandy. That was always my drink of an evening. And you would have a glass of milk. Here you are, Hugo. Like old times, hmm? To our reunion. How did you find me? Oh, we have ways. Tell me, are you happy here? I've never been happier in my life. I think you have been very foolish living like this. When you could be comfortable back home lecturing at the university, doing the work you like. Lecturing on what? Even eight years ago, your, your party wouldn't let me tell the truth about English or American history. What would I be lecturing about now? You could find another subject. Yes. Anyway, I'm at home here. Otto, I think you will be glad to know I bought the old estate back and completely restored it. The old house, Hugo? That's wonderful. Yes, it's exactly the same as when we were boys. Really? Except the modern improvements, of course. Oh, it must have cost a lot of money. It did. But I was able to obtain it. Things were simplified for me because I had served my country. The same could be done for you. What do you mean, Hugo? It's quite simple, really. You see, we are rather interested in this shop of yours. Uh -huh. We need a place where certain messages can be exchanged. A private post office, if you like. A blind for the use of your party. I suppose you could call it that. This place would be ideal. And it would mean no effort whatsoever on your part. Merely your cooperation. I would conduct my business in the normal way. Exactly. And at the same time, you would be serving your country. And that you will do, Otto. Won't you? Yes, you will. I will. I will serve my country. Only my country is no longer yours. I'm an American citizen. I'll do none of the things you ask me. Now leave me alone. Please go. You recognize this gentleman? Sure, his name's Otto Van Detner. And of course, you recognize him. Jock Mr. Van Detner's memory. Tell him your name. The name's Aiello, Joe Aiello. We did a little business in Mexico some years ago. That's all. Wait downstairs and tell the lady to come up. Yes, sir. You don't give us enough credit, Otto. 
Did you really think a German national could buy a fake passport and entrance papers without our knowledge? Yes, I did enter the country illegally. I might have stayed on the border for a year, waiting for a quota number. I might never have got one. I couldn't wait to become an American, to start life over again. How touching. I am no more interested in your motives than the American government would be. I'll go to them. I'll explain. I'll tell them what you are trying to make me do. Really? And I'll tell them that you are blackmailing me, that you tried to sell me information for which I wouldn't pay. It will be the word of a man who bought a forged passport against mine. They will deport you, Otto. No. Yes. And I'll leave your reception in Berlin to your imagination. Miss Harper. You see, Otto, Miss Harper has worked for us much longer than she has for you. You know your orders, Miss Harper? Yes, sir. For your benefit, Otto. Miss Harper will report to me anything that seems suspicious to her. All right, Miss Harper. Good night. There's a registered letter. You'll have to sign for it yourself. Registered letter? Where from? It's from Canada. Sign here, please. Thank you. Thank you. What is it? Stamps. A man wants you to sell them on consignment. From Halifax, huh? I see what I can do. I'll take care of them. Thank you. There's a check for you to sign. What for? I sold those stamps. I'll deduct our commission from the check. Rather quick sale. Business must be picking up. It is. Well? A convoy of 40 ships left Halifax. Tuesday the 19th, 3 a.m. Over 48 hours ago. Their position tonight should be perfect. Send the message. You're all right. Our post office is working well.
the men who lost their lives will probably never be known. But the high rate of destruction of ships in the convoy would seem to point conclusively to one fact, that a large number of submarines must have been congregated at the point of attack. This means that the U-boats met at the point by prearrangement, and that in turn means they had knowledge of the convoy's sailing date, knowledge smuggled out of Halifax. How that information came into their possession is not... Good evening, Otto. Feeling any better? I've been hoping you would come. I've been looking for you every evening. Good evening, Professor. Well, it's been some time, hasn't it? Yes. Otto, I'll bet anything you haven't taken my advice about seeing a doctor. There's nothing really wrong. A little run down, that's all. But you haven't been away from this shop for days. That's why I dropped by. Look here. There's a very unusual auction at McDowell. How about coming? No, thanks. I'll do a little reading and go to bed. There must be something very wrong when you pass up an auction like this one. If you're not better the next time I come, I shall take you to a doctor. I'll be all right. Sure you won't come? No, thanks. Well, good night then. Good night, Miss Harper. Will you see that he takes care of himself? I will. Good night, Professor. Oh, 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 Jim. I almost forgot about that $15 you advanced me the other evening. Here are the overprinted Guatemalas. I told you to forget about it, didn't I? I absolutely insist. Oh, well... You know you want them, you old hypocrite? Mm. And now get along to your auction, yes? Good night. All right, then. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Jim? Surprise visits seem to be your specialty. But then you always know when I'm home. I've noticed the gentleman across the street. What is it you want now? Nothing. I felt like talking to you. I've been thinking about old times in Germany. You remember the Clayman family? Of course. Did you know that old Clayman is dead? No. When? About a year ago. Too bad. He was a fine man. The sad fact of the matter is, Franz Clayman was responsible for his father's death. How? You remember Franz was becoming important in the party before you left Germany. He became even more important after you went away. And he found that his father was working in the underground movement against the government. It would have ruined his life. Franz did the only thing he could. You mean he betrayed his own father? He had no choice. When the cause is great enough, personal considerations mean nothing. What? What are you getting at? You 
forced me into the position in which Franz Kleeman found himself. Jim. Jim Sterling. What has happened to him? You can blame yourself. You shouldn't have sent him. He had an unfortunate traffic accident. He was killed. <laughs> Downstairs. I'll call you when I want you. Yes, sir. Harper? Yes, sir. Come up here. Yes, Baron von Detner. He's in there.
dollar fifty five, sir. Mister, a dollar fifty five. Thank you. Baron von Detner? My key, please. You must have it, sir. If I had, I wouldn't ask you for it. Yes, sir. Boy? Yes, sir? Open Baron von Detner's apartment. Yes, sir. Good night. Morning, is it? I'm afraid it is. You knew I'd be back by 12. Sorry. I've asked you before to remember that I work hard all day and can't afford to keep hours like this. I didn't mean to keep you waiting. Of course not. Your consideration for others is well known. As a matter of fact, I had to dine by myself. McHenry had a sudden business engagement. Or did he? But Karen. I can't help it. Don't you think I'd rather dine with you than spend the evening on stuff like shipping schedule? I suppose if you don't have dinner with this man tonight, the whole defense program will blow up. No, but my job might. Seriously, Karen, I've got to do it. But how about lunch tomorrow? At the Colonial? Say, one o'clock? Oh, all right. But I warn you, two minutes late and you'll be lunching alone. I'll be there if I have to resign. Please, my hair. Oh, all right. Good night, darling. Good night. That was only a slight skirmish, not one of our major engagements. The shipping gentleman was on his way up. Hello, Harry. Come in. Hi, Grover. Say, who's that terrific gal that just came out of here? Just a friend. You may have heard of her. Karen Durrell. Karen Durrell? Have I heard of her? You ought to see the bills I pay her for my wife. Yeah, she's some ad for her own business. <laughs> you dog, you. What about the Hannah B? Got her loaded? All loaded and ready to sail when we get the orders. Our papers will be for Cape Town, making port on the 15th. That's all that's important. Cape Town. Hannah B. So that isn't the ship we want either. No. How much longer will I have to cultivate Mr. McHenry's distinguished company? Oh, until we find that ship, of course. A pleasant prospect. I'm going home. Yes? Fritz? I heard Madame leave her own. Yes? If you're ready to retire. No, not yet. Then shall I bring your brandy to the study? Yes, the study. Very well, Herbaron.
Anything else, Herr Baron? No, you can go to bed. Thank you, Herr Baron. Good night. Good night. Good morning, Herr Good morning. I'm sorry to be late. I was quite surprised to hear you moving about. Surprised? Why, yes. You do not usually rise this early, Herr Baron. I shall start your shower at once. Good morning, sir. The consulate? Yes. Good morning, Herr Consul. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, Herr Consul. Morning. Good morning, Herr Consul. Morning. Herr Richten wishes to see you urgently. Send him in. Yes, sir. seems closed. What else? I've heard from Miss Harper. I have given instructions to keep the shop going. She is to say that Becker went away for a rest. Good. Be sure to keep everything looking normal. Every detail. Yes, sir. These are the manifests you wanted to see again before you approved them. I have already signed. With your signature, they can proceed. That's right, thank you. Is there a Mr. Becker here? I understand this is his store. It is, but Mr. Becker is on his vacation. Will he be away long? Several weeks, I think. I see, well, I can wait. I only wanted to see him about some stamps. Good day. Good day. Page 13.
Middlesex. North Bay Navy Yard. Torpedo and bomb damage. 39 and 14 repair detail. And the Middlesex was the unidentified cruiser that our Air Force called it Gibraltar. Yes, she would have had time to limp over here by now. Well, she won't limp very much further. 39 and 14 are Lemos and Ballard, I think. Or may I look at your list, sir? Yes. Just a minute, I have a call to make. Get the list for me, please. Yes, 39 is uh, Court Lemoth, and 14 is Lester Ballot. Good, reliable men. With those two under repair gang, the British won't get the Middlesex back as soon as they think. If they get her back at all. May I remind you that you are due at the Colonial for lunch, Haberon? Uh, oh, yes. The Colonial. Stop at the next cigar store. Yes, sir. I get something for you, sir? No, I want to pick out some cigars. What's yours, mister? Two. I'll take these. There you are. Match? Yeah. Thank you. Their names are Kurt Lemoth and Lester Ballot. Say, where do you get your information? Who are you? Hello? Hello? Wait a minute. He hung up. Check on those two birds. Thank you. Baron von Dittner's martini. Very dry. Yes, sir. In a minute. Certainly, Baron. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Through here, please. Oh, Captain. Yes, sir. So who is the gentleman with the monocle who just came in? Why, that's Baron von Dettner, yes, sir. Of course, I was sure I knew him. Met him in Berlin four years ago. Will you take this note over to him, please? Why, certainly, Mr. Milburn. Thank you. The gentleman over there asked me to give you this. Which gentleman? The gentleman in the booth, sir. How do you do, Baron? How do you do? Yes, I hoped you'd remember me. Certainly I remember you, Mr. Milbar. I thought you might not. You were so busy when I saw you in Berlin. I shall never forget your kindness in straightening out my customs difficulties. You saved me about two miles of red tape. I was happy to do it, Mr. Milbar. I was just about to have my coffee. May I join you? Please do. Thank you. Serve Mr. Milbert's coffee here, please. Of course, ma'am. What about it? The Hannah B., what about her? She isn't the ship we want. More trouble for me from up above. They're in a hurry. We are doing everything we can. Of course. I have had news about the Middlesex. She's at North Bay. Yes? Lemoth and Ballot are in the repair crew. Good work. 
Oh, uh, Madame Durell. Oh, Mr. Milbach. Delighted to see you again. Thank you, Mr. McHenry, Mr. Milbach. How do you do? Oh, Madame Durell, may I present my friend Baron von Detner, the German consul? Uh, if you'll forgive me, I'd rather not meet the Nazi consul. I'm terribly sorry, Baron von Detner. Oh, it's nothing. Nothing at all. That was an excellent performance, Baron. You really look surprised. Did I? You certainly did. You were awfully rough on the Baron. If you had had to abandon an established business, tear up all your roots and leave Paris, you'd be rough on the Baron, too. So you have lived in America for 25 years? Yes, yes sir. Consul. Why do you want to become American citizens now? For a long time, we think to go back home to the old country. But then... Our children grew up here. And our friends are here. And it is too late. We are too old. Are you sure it isn't because you don't like the new government? Oh, no, oh, no, 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 Herr Consul. Consul. But, uh, but you see... We have our home. The neighbors talk so. They say if we do this and keep our little money here and don't go back to the old country, it might be bad for our relatives there. You see, I have still a brother there and my wife's brother too. Go ahead. Take out your citizenship papers. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. No one will trouble your relatives. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, that's wonderful. Have a run. I've just had a message. We are to meet Milba at once. Something has gone wrong. What? I don't know, but Brenner is going to be there. Brenner? Yes. And if it's anything the Gestapo is interested in, it must be important. You better pull around the corner. Yes, sir. Good evening, Baron. Good evening. Good evening, Herr Baron. Good evening. Well, what is it? Lemoth and Ballard have been arrested. What? This afternoon. Just before the end of the day shift. What happened? Were they clumsy enough to be caught at work? No, I made sure of that. They were taken without warning. They had done nothing to arouse suspicion. Well, that means only one thing. Exactly. We'd better find out who's doing it quick. Have you any idea who it is? No. It should be easy to trace. From the time I got the information from Miss Harper, only myself and Riften knew. Have a roll. Be quiet. No one is accusing you. What about the messenger you sent it by? Everyone who handled the message can be trusted. Herr Brenner agrees with me. I do. But nevertheless, I'm going to get them up here this evening and make sure. There's only one other person that might be doubtful. Who? Madame Durell. Madame Durell? Surely that doesn't surprise you, Herr Baron. You yourself reported she hasn't been any too enthusiastic. Yes, but she wouldn't do anything like this. When she worked for us in Paris, I would say no. But now, since she's come to America, maybe we cannot be too sure. I'll see her tonight. Probably nothing to it. But you might as well put it up to her. I will. Herr Baron. Oh, yes. What about Ludwig, the chauffeur? Could he have overheard anything? No. I dog to the colonial and back alone. You better send him back when you're through. It won't do any harm to ask him a few questions. Very well. Stay here, Richard. I'll be at home all evening. When Brenner is through with his examination, call me. Yes, Sir Consul. By morning, I will have a cable from Gestapo headquarters in Berlin. If there is a traitor among us, I better know it. And I will, before I get through with them. I'm sure you will.
Ludwig, Mr. Brenner wants you to come back. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night. Can I get you anything else, Herr Otto? What do you mean? What are you saying? I have known since this morning. Known what? What is it, man? Have you gone mad? You forget, Herr Otto, that I tended the vein that wound in your shoulder myself. What do you intend to do? Whatever I can to help you. I've served your family all my life, Herr Otto. Yes, but... That is my kind of politics. My only kind. Before you went with Hugo, I would have trusted you with my life. I am not different than any others we once knew. We do what we are told because we must. But from the earliest days, Herr Otto, I belonged with you, not with your brother. To him, I was only a servant. But you were like a friend I loved. Fritz, dear old Fritz, of course they couldn't change you. Herr Otto, I've been so worried about you all day. Fritz, you have to help me. Of course, Herr Otto, anything. You must tell me everything about my brother, who his friends were, where he went, everything about his personal life, about Madame de Rell. Everything I know, Herr Otto. Yes, but, but first I have to tell you what has happened. Oh, no. No, Otto, you, you must not tell me anything unless you want to. Yes, I must tell you. I must. He was in a phone booth. Yes, sir. I thought at the time it was funny the Baron using a public phone. Could you by any... No way... doubt he remembered a phone call which he had forgotten before he left the consulate. That's all, Ludwig. You can go. All right, Mr. Brenner. Mr. Nobar. Why should he telephone from a public booth and tell the chauffeur he wanted cigars? Well, he got the cigars. Naturally. But he also made a phone call, and Ballot and Lemoth are in jail. Ah, it's ridiculous, Milbar. He might have wanted to make a private call, some woman, perhaps. But I've known von Tetner's record for years. Oh, no, Otto. Madame's apartment is next door. She goes out through our service entrance and crosses the landing to her own. Well, but that's it. If I may say so, Herr Otto, I don't think Madame liked to have our own. How do you know? Well, I believe he was interested in her at first. But one night I heard her tell him that, well, she was very definite. And after that, he treated her very coolly. I see. Now, who is this McHenry? I don't know, Otto. Just a minute. He's in who's who. Grover Blaine McHenry, Grotten Harvard, Vice President of Northgate Chemical Industries. Chemicals. Explosives. But why are we after one particular ship? Oh, please, Herr Otto, listen to me. Do not go on with this. It is too dangerous. Don't you understand, Fritz? If I don't go on, I killed him only to save my own life. The things they are doing must be stopped. When that's been done, I won't care what happens. That's all, Fritz. There it is. The ship, the sailing date, the destination. You don't seem to be pleased with your success. Pleased? Yes, I should be pleased, shouldn't I? It was a most pleasant evening. Dinner in Mr. McHenry's apartment. Mr. McHenry had plenty to drink. Enough to make him careless, enough to make him revoltingly drunk. It was great sport to go through his pockets. Naturally, I should be pleased. I should be very proud. I'm glad to see how you feel about your work. Don't question my feelings, just so long as I bring you what you want. You have the papers. I'm going home. Wait. I must talk to you. Can't it wait? No. Lemoth and Ballard were arrested in the Navy Yard today. 
What has that to do with me? Someone must have informed on them. Brenner had some doubts. If Brenner had any doubts about me, they must have come from you. You haven't been exactly enthusiastic lately. I hate what I'm doing. You're serving a cause Stop that... It. Your noble cause. That's what I used to call it. I was insane like the rest of you those first few years. I felt like a combination of Joan of Arc and Charlotte Corday. I was part of a movement that was going to save the world. And now? I know it's a movement to destroy the world. Karen. The day I realized our army was crushing its way into Paris, the, the horror of it struck me. And the thought of the decent people who had trusted me made me sick and ashamed. I'm sick and ashamed now. Well, that's what you wanted to hear me say. Now go on. Tell Brenner. Tell him everything I said. Quote me word for word. But also tell him this. I've worked for all of you too long to have any illusions about quitting. My family isn't going to suffer for my mistakes. Karen? Karen, I can understand how sometimes one must do things one dislikes doing. I'm really sorry for you, Karen. I'm sure you are. Please, don't go. Hello? Yes, Richten. No clue at all? Let me speak to Brenner. Bernard must have been one of those people. Have every one of them watched. Don't let up on them until we find who it is. But I have good news to make up for that. Madame de Rael finally found the right ship for us. Yes, sailing date, destination, everything. She just left. I had a long talk with her. No, there's nothing wrong with her except the nervous strain she's been under. She did a great piece of work and she's absolutely reliable. Yes, all right, good night. You're wondering why I did that. I did it because I have a job to do. And you are very valuable to me. There couldn't have been any other reason. I haven't enjoyed making you hate me, Karen. At the restaurant today, the way you looked at me. It wasn't the consulate, it was me. What else could you expect? Nothing. But if ever I found a way to let you out of this, I would take it, Karen. I can't believe you're really saying these things. They're so, so different from you. Something has changed you. Go home and get some rest, Karen. Good night. Good night. Is there anything else you want, Arato? No, thank you, Fritz. Things will work out, sir. You are worried about Madame. Anything I do to destroy the others will destroy her with them. But I can't stop now. Their work must be ended no matter what happens to anyone. The man's here to fix your clock, Mr. Keeler. Come in. Thank you. You're welcome. We're all set. Farrington is the ship. It's in there. It's all fixed to go off when he wanted to. You sure you can get on that boat okay? Leave that to me. Where's the dog? Yeah. Okay. Okay.
Fritz, I'm so worried about that Farrington. I beg your pardon, sir? The boat they were so anxious about. They have some plan. I've got to find out what it is. Oh, I'm sure you will, sir. Yes, but how and when? I'm helpless until I know what they are doing. Why don't you try to relax, sir? Just for tonight. I happened to meet Madame de Rel while I was out. Yes? Yes, and uh, she said she would like you to dine in her apartment tonight. Madame de Rel said that? Yes, sir. And knowing that you were dining alone, I took the liberty of saying that I thought you would accept. So? But I can't understand why she... Oh, how was it you happened to meet Madame this afternoon? Oh, well, I was downstairs, and as you know, Madame's establishment is just off the lobby. In other words, you dropped in on Madame. And, uh, you might say that. And the subject of dinner quite naturally came up, huh? Exactly, sir. After you brought it up, you asked her to do this, didn't you? Believe me, Fritz, I'm grateful for what you tried to do. But it's no use. Herr Otto, I refuse to believe there's no way out of all this for both of you. Don't you see, Fritz? It's no good for either of us. Telephone, madame. Yes, sir. Fritz? Yes, sir. Tell her that I'll be there. Yes. And lay out my things. Your things are laid out, Herr Otto. And if you don't mind, I'll go to Madame de Rell's now. I volunteered my services for the dinner. Mm, excellent coffee. A pity I haven't such an expert cook. Perhaps I'll let you borrow him sometime. <laughs> well, oh, I'm sorry. I meant to take those out. I'm glad you didn't. You are talented, Kay. Thank you. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> One of my more old-fashioned numbers. <laughs> How wonderful, Kat. And what a nice friend. The romance didn't last long. He left me and ran off with the noonday sun. Heartless. <laughs> Charming little house. Where was the picture taken? In the suburbs of Paris. I understand it's now being used as the local Gestapo headquarters. What a lovely night. Much too beautiful to stay indoors. It is. But unfortunately, we can't be seen together. No, we can't. It's very dark across the street from the side entrance. If your car happened to be there when I passed... Where to? The moon. Yes, sir. A little above the moon, is that all right? Beautiful. Um, Boston Symphony tonight. This night should have music. Mendelssohn. Forbidden. Never have believed it. Believed what? Oh, being here like this. Two days ago, I'd have said it was impossible. What is it, Hugo? What has happened to you? Or is it me? This is a moment in a lovely shadow. Let's not turn light on it. Let's not examine it. We must. It feels as if we've been on some huge whirling surface where I could never quite see you except in half-light. And now suddenly the whirling has stopped. And I see you clearly for the first time. Not the person I thought I had seen. But somebody else. This is an illusion. Something to be forgotten. No, to be remembered. Everything else is something to be forgotten. If you only knew how I've prayed to be out of this, free. You will be, I promise. But how? I don't know yet. 
And you, what about you? Karin, I'm not. I must go on with my work. I have a job to do and can't stop until it's done. You go. It's time to go back. Please. Sorry. Hello, Baron. Well? I got the Farrington deal all set. Well, that's what you expected to do, isn't it? Oh, sure, sure. Only I thought it was going to be another little job. But uh, this is a real big one. Ain't it, Baron? What of it? Oh, nothing, except a guy ought to get paid pretty good when he's in on a caper to wreck the Panama Canal. He ought to get paid good for that. Wasn't he paid? Certainly he was. Sure, I got the 500 that Brenner gave me. Three for me and two for Keeler. But, but what's that? You know, I've been thinking. The Farrington ain't at the canal yet. Maybe somebody tips the Navy off. Or something. They catch her in the middle of the ocean. That time bomb goes off. Ha <laughs> ha, zowie. Nothing but water gets scattered around. And the canal is still doing business at the old stand. But you won't be. Just a minute, Richard. What does he want to say that for? I've done a lot of work for you, Baron. You know you can trust me. Now, I was figuring maybe we could make a friendly deal. A little on top of that 300. Maybe a grand. You would sell anybody out, wouldn't you? Did I say I was going to sell something? Only a guy can use a little more dough. And don't get any funny ideas. You know, I get a pal outside. Anything happens to me, he knows what to do. There's no use getting excited, you know. Perhaps you deserve a little more than you got. I know you see it my way, Baron. Here's your money. You have been dealing with Mr. Brenner. Give me a seat for this made out to him. Sure, Baron. Well, Baron, thank you. Now Baron. listen to me. That's all you'll ever get. Don't come here again unless you are sent for. And if you ever dare to ask for more money or open your mouth about the Farrington. It's okay, Baron. I, I won't say nothing. I got all I want. I, I won't talk. I won't. Get out. It won't work, Aberon. He'll sell us out one day. At least his mouth is stopped until that money is spent. And tell Brenner that if he can't be more careful about the people he selects, I'll have something to say to Berlin. Yes, Everon. It doesn't matter how I got them. They are in the mail. Now, the man's name is Aiello. Joe Aiello. A-I-E-L-L-O. Know what he looks like? Okay. Got his address? Okay, we'll find it. Now, listen, mister. Are you sure about that? How are they going to do it? 
Get in touch with the FBI office in Washington. There's a ship called the Farrington loaded with dynamite for the Pacific Coast. She's got a bomb aboard. Time to blow her up when she gets inside the canal. Step on it. Now listen, mister. Your first tip was right. But who are you? Should reach the canal in a half hour, sir. Very good, Mr. Graves. Captain! Did you verify this? Yes, sir. Prepare to abandon ship and send Mr. Jackson to me at once. Yes, sir. Counted for? Yes, sir. As soon as the boats are hoisted, get underway. All right, sir. Right on the nose. A beauty. It's all in the touch, boys. In the touch. <laughs> we are interrupting the program of dance music for a flash of important news. The war was brought close to the Western Hemisphere tonight when the destroyer Beardsley intercepted the naval supply ship Farrington as she was about to enter the Panama Canal loaded with munitions. An incendiary time bomb set to explode in the canal destroyed the freighter shortly after the crew was removed. It is understood that the Navy Department acted on a secret tip. Stay tuned to this station for further news. What's the matter, Joe? I'm tired of the game. Herbie, give me a couple of slugs, will you? Shut that off, will you? Yeah? He's right here. It's for you, Joe. Sounds like Rosie. Tell him I'm not here. I already told you he was. Give me that, will you? Rosie, you home? Okay, now stay right there. I'll be over in a couple of minutes and I'll stick right there. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure, honey. I'll wait for you. Hurry on over. So long. Now, listen, you guys. No rough stuff in my room. Joella don't mean nothing to me. But I got my rent paid for a month and I ain't gonna get thrown out. Don't worry. We'll leave the minute he gets here. All I gotta say is clear the deck in half an hour. Believe me, I didn't. I don't know who it was, but it wasn't me. So help me. What's the matter, Joe? Nobody said you did it. We got nothing against you. We just want you to come along and answer a few questions, that's all. We think we know who did it. Yeah? Sure. Come on. I'm sure Aelo tipped them off about the Farrington, and probably about Bellard and Lemoth. There's someone in this besides Aelo. I'm positive it's none of the people I've worked with. Rifton. What's the matter? Listen. It hasn't sung since Otto Becker was killed. What about it? Never sang except when he was here. What are you thinking? Good evening. What is it? Haven't the others come yet? 
I know that, Laurent. But they'll be here shortly. Why aren't they here now? Haven't they been notified? Brenner and Milbar are dead. What happened? Aiello, they shut it out in his girlfriend's rooming house. What about Aiello? He was hit, he couldn't get away. The police probably have him by now. I don't know about this place, and you shouldn't be found here, Consul. Yes, clear up everything and get out of here. Wait, quick. How long was the Baron alone with his mother that night? A long time. Did you see Becker's body? No. Good night, Richten. Good night, Herr Baron. Ludwig, take Mr. Richten home. Yes, Herr Baron. Good night. Drei Minuten der Konsul, Ludwig. Yes, sir. Yes? You are right. The entire list of names is missing. And the receipt Aelo gave him. He must have turned everything in. Get out of there as fast as you can. Wait a minute. I guess it's finished, Fritz. What are you going to do now, Herr Otto? I don't know. I have a feeling of complete emptiness. I can't even think. Herr Otto, you should speak to Madame de Rell. No, but she's been on the phone again, sir. She must keep herself completely out of this. I'm sorry, sir. Are you at home, sir? To anyone but Madame de Rell. them all, didn't they? All our hard work gone for nothing. I should have said all but one. Karen Durell. Apparently. You have given an excellent performance, but you can stop now, Mr. Otto Becker. It's taken you quite a while, hasn't it? Otto Becker, the great American patriot. Well, why have you waited? Why haven't you told the FBI who you are? They will probably give you a medal. Get out. My first impulse was to shoot you, but I decided that would make you an even greater hero. But there's one thing I can do. You took Karen Durell's name off that list. You try to save her. I'm going to see that you don't. No. She hasn't done anything to harm you. She had no part in all this. She doesn't even know who I am. You think I believe that? I know why you took her name off, why you want to save her. I took it off because I... Because she worked with you. Because you have done this together. Fritz, ask Madame if she can come in to see me. Now. Yes, sir.
Wait. Hugo, I've tried so hard to reach you. Why wouldn't you let me talk to you before? It was not possible. We've had a busy week. I've been so terribly worried about you. Who could have done it? How could it have happened? Why wasn't I arrested with the others? They don't know about you. You saved me, didn't you? Everything will be all right. You must not worry. But you'll be sent away now. You have to go back to Berlin. No, Karen. You can stay here? Yes. How can that be? Trust me, Karen. But go now. Don't worry. How long before I see you again? Only a little while. You heard for yourself. You can see she had nothing to do with it. Yes. That will make it even more painful when she goes to prison. She's done nothing. Nothing that helped destroy us, quite true. But a great deal to assist us, Mr. Becker. Enough to keep her in prison for quite a long time. You can't do it. You can't do this to her. Did you think I was going to let you two live happily ever after? Rayston. No matter what you do to her, you will still be deported with the other members of the consulate. I have a choice for you to make. To arrive in Berlin in disgrace, or as a hero who has delivered a traitor to Nazi justice. What trick is this? It's not a trick. It's a bargain. Leave Kai and Darrell alone, and I'll go back to Berlin with you. Not as Otto Becker, an American citizen, but as Baron von Deppner, a Nazi traitor. Are you really crazy enough to do that? Is it a bargain? Getting you back to Germany would be worth the freedom of 50 current rares. I'll see you at the dock. I hope you don't think, Mr. Becker, that anything you have done could put an end to our work here. No, I don't. But I'm only one. One of 130 million Americans who together with all the good people of the world are rising to crush you and everything you stand for once and for all. Now get out of here. Fritz? Yes, sir, Otto. I want you to pack some things for me. Where are we going? We are not going anywhere. I'm sailing with Mr. Richten. You can't do it. Fritz. No one is worth doing such a thing for, not even Madame de Rell. You know what they'll do to you. I won't let you. I will go to the authorities myself. No, Fritz. I want to go. My job is done. Then please, Arato, let me come with you. No. You can go on serving me here. I want you to look after Madame de Rell. She'll need you. Fritz. Yes, Arato. And no one is ever to know. And now please go and pack. 